workers, as you well know. Uh, have they disrupted this group, Al Shabaab? Has it disrupted your organization's deliveries? Well, you know, the, the, what you say is true, but Al Shabaab is changing. They have said that they will open up the regions under their control to allow in reputable agencies to bring assistance. So they have seen. I suppose the plight of their people, and any political group knows that if they're not meeting the needs of their people, then they have no legitimacy whatsoever. So the circumstances there are changing. And Mary Robinson, the former president of Ireland and the former UN Commissioner for Human Rights, who led our delegation, made the point here in Nairobi tonight that in a strange way, this famine may be an opportunity to, uh, to have political developments in Somalia because it changes the game. Uh, everybody now has to take account of this crisis and I believe that if there's correct political engagement in a very considered and focused way with the different political factions in Somalia, there is an opportunity to move the political situation forward and that would be to the benefit of everybody, not least the people of Somalia who are so desperately in need of aid. It was Justin Kilcullen, who's director of the Irish aid group known as Trokara, speaking to us from Nairobi, Kenya. As recently as last week, food security experts were reluctant to call the situation in East Africa a famine. With today's formal declaration by the United Nations, that's no longer the case. The world's region strategy explains what's behind the change in terminology. Food security experts don't use the word famine casually. To them, it's a precise scientific term. Chris Hilberner is an advisor to the U.S. Famine Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. He says there are three pieces of evidence that are needed in order to make a declaration of famine. The first is a severe scarcity of food. We have that evidence that 20% or more of the population has extremely limited access to food and very little ability to cope with those food deficits. The second piece of evidence is a high level of malnutrition. To be a family, at least 30% of children aged 5 and below have to be severely malnourished. And Hilberna says the third piece of evidence is a high death rate. The death rate that applies to the entire population has to be higher than 2 per 10,000 per day. That's four times the average death rate in a food secure population. Hilberna says that earlier this year, Fusenet had warned the international community that the situation in parts of Somalia might be headed towards a famine. By the time we got to May and June, the information we had on food access and malnutrition.